あのちょっとまず僕の方から見た感想を言わせていただきますあの実はあの僕とマックさんとは、えー、と同い年なんですよねあの同じ年生まれでしかも誕生日がほぼ僕の2週間ぐらい前にお生まれになっていて、oh, really? まず率直に言ってあのもしかして僕らは同じような映画を見て同じような映画に憧れてあの来たんじゃないかなというようなあの感じあの同世代の映画だなっていうふうにちょっと思ったりもしたんです。Oh, wow. That's great. Thank you. I'm so yeah, glad. Yeah. So, wait, yeah. what's some of the films? What are the films? Like,、uh, like what movies? Give me, give me what you're doing. あのゴッドファーザーとかアメリカンニューシネマですよね。Yeah. あのやっぱりどちらかというとそのなんていうんですかねテレビテレビを意識して作っていたちょっとなんていうんですかねこう明るい照明とかもね明るい照明というよりもちゃんと思い切って陰影でねやっぱ映画ですから当然こう陰影で勝負するとか、sure. それとなんていうんですかねあの勝者にですね勝ったものになんかな。感情を委ねないというか共感を委ねないむしろその敗者の気持ちに敗れたものの気持ちにですねこう共感していくみたいななんかそういうアメリカンニューシーマーの時代の映画70年代のもうメインは本当にゴッドファーザーなんですけどもそういう印象を持ちましたね。Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. いやいやいや特にこう、あのー、シンプルではない複雑さ,複雑さ特にあの一人一人の役が持っている。登場人物が持っている複雑な感情白か黒ではないもっと人間って複雑だよねもっと人間って面白いよねっていうあの比較的こう分かりやすさを前提するこうヒーロー映画とは全く真逆の思考本当に人間ドラマを本当にあの監督が描きたいんだなっていう思いがすごく伝わってきましたそこでちょっとい,、right. yes. いやいやそこでお伺いしたいのはその,あの監督の多分狙いを実現するためのそのバットマンになって2年目っていう設定がやっぱ秀一だったと思うんですけどそのアイディアを思いついたきっかけとかあのそれによって何が生まれたかちょっとそのあたりについてお伺いできますか Well, I think the reason I wanted to set it in year two was because I wanted、um, I didn't want to do an origin tale because a lot there have been a, look, you, you enter into making a Batman film and you're entering into a history of film and There have been some great Batman films, and so you, you, you kind of, there is a, there's an imperative to do something definitive and, and your own. And I feel that way anyway. I don't know where to put the camera unless I can make something personal. And so I wanted to make sure that, first of all, we wouldn't do an origin tale because we'd seen it done, but I wanted still to make sure that Batman. Was the center of that story, and that he was an imperfect character, that he was a human character, and that you gave him、uh, a story that would have an arc so that he could have an awakening. So I thought, well, one thing I could do is lean into what really began with the creation of the character from Bob Kane and Bill Finger in the comics、um, as, as kind of a noir in the world's greatest detective. And so, this idea of leaning into a psychological detective story and make Batman be solving a crime that would lead him on a journey to discover the, the corruption, the history of this place, the place that robbed his family from him as a boy,、um, I figured that that idea of hitting him early in his career would give him a way that he could have an awakening and change. I didn't want him to be already set in his ways, I wanted him to still to be. Acting in this way where、um, his shadow side was driving him, almost like Jekyll and Hyde. And he didn't understand the degree to which all of this is quite personal. And,、um, and so that he would start to understand even that part of the reason that he wasn't having the effect he wanted to have in this city was because、um, the message he was projecting of vengeance. Was not necessarily the message that he needed to be projecting, and that that would ha- was having an effect on the city that he didn't intend. So, that this was all about a Batman in his early years who could transform and could have an arc so that we could show an emotional journey. I wanted it to be a human, flawed depiction of this character. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Great. そうそれとやっぱり今ちょっと冒頭ちょっと最初にあの言っていただいてもうこういうそのバットマンの映画に関して素晴らしい作品ってたくさんあるそれに対してやっぱりこうプレッシャー同じ作り手としてね
そういう作品に立ち向かう時のプレッシャーっていうのはものすごかったと思うんだけどそこにこう打ち勝った、yes. あの打ち勝つためにどういうことをされたのかそしてそれでこうそれにどういうふうに立ち向かおうと思ったのかあのちょっと同じ作り手として聞きたいですね。You know, I mean, I think that you have to、uh, approach the film with a certain reasonable level of, level of terror, you know, because、um, I don't think, you know, you can't take it casually. Because, well, first of all, for, to me, the work I do, even though I do, have done, you know, the, the last number of films I've done have all been genre films. And I think if I could. Sort of describe the kind of filmmaking that I thought I would have begun at the beginning of my career. You know, I was inspired by the films you're talking about in the 70s, and they're all sort of very humanist, personal films,、mm -hmm. and、um, and weren't necessarily, they might touch in genre, like, you know, Taxi Driver is kind of a gothic、uh, mm -hmm. horror movie, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's a, it, that kind of film. But,、um, but I, I kind of wouldn't have imagined that I would be. Doing the films that I am doing, even though I love them. And it's just that the industry has changed so dramatically that this is now what, if you want to make a movie on this scale, you're making this kind of movie. And I was so fortunate that they came to me to do this one because I can't think of another that would lend itself so perfectly to my interests, which is that there's a way to make this kind of film personal, personal storytelling. And so the thing that I tried to do was to find that way. To make it personal and to find a way to really make it human. And I think、um, this myth has endured for 80 years because it's that powerful. And there have been great movies. And I think that what happens is you're driven by the good kind of fear the fear that says, okay, you're going to fail if you do something that we've seen before.、Um, and you're going to fail if you aren't reaching for something that shows your ambition because others have done that and succeeded. And so, in that way, it's a great challenge. You have the challenge put before you to go, like, okay, you've seen a great Batman film, so what can you do that's different? What can you do to try and make a film that you hope will be great? And so,、um, you, mix, you, 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 you approach it with a certain level of、uh, excitement and, and a healthy dose of terror. That's a very good thing. いやあの僕はそ,そこのねまず最初のチャレンジを実を言うとあのバットマンの登場のシーンでですねやっぱりその監督がやろうとしている今回のバットマンのテイストというのがもう一瞬にしてこうなったかなこっちに飛び込んできたあの溜め込んで溜め込んで暗闇から現れるバットマンで実は今まであのたくさんのバットマンを見てきたけど僕が見たかったああ僕がですねこれもパーソナルにあって。僕が見たかったバットマンっていうのはこのバットマンじゃないかって思うような登場の仕方をしたんです。今回の映画で。That, that's so great. I mean, because to me, there's an aspect of, of a kind of、um, psychological horror. And,、um, you know, one of the inspirations for me in terms of that very appearance is David Lynch. Lost Highway, like yeah, 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 yeah. the emergence of, in, in the dark hall. Bill Paxton comes out of, out of, out of、uh, that readable black. He just emerges, and you don't know why, but it's very scary, very unsettling, and very uncanny, almost like a dream. Batman appearance is like a nightmare vision. And so、um, I, I wanted to do that too. I, I, to me, I felt that that existed. In the comics to a degree, and, I, and that was one of the things that we worked really hard to try to achieve, which was how to make his goal. In wearing this suit,、um, there's two goals. One is, of course, just the tactical. He's trying to protect himself. But why would you appear in a suit、um, that is like in the form of this bat? And it's because you're meant to be a horrific image. You're meant to be a creature of the night. And so that, for me, that, that means a lot to me that you got that, that that was the kind of、um, appearance that you were waiting for, because that is what I'd always wanted to see, too. あのそれまあ今おっしゃったようなことも含めてあの人間バットマンが人間であるっていうことがこだわりがその今回のバットマンスーツにね細やかな傷とかそのバットマンも傷だらけであるっていうことがあのコスチュームから分かるっていうここがすごくこうあのかんまあ地味に感動したんだよね俺ああ<笑>そうそうあの細かくですね彼の,その葛藤の跡がコスチュームに現れているつまりあの監督がおっしゃったねこう人間を描くっていうところがビジュアルにも徹底していってるそれはコスチュームだし光と影についてのあのここまでねあの
鍵にこだわった陰影にこだわった演出っていうのはもちろんセットも素晴らしいんだけれどもアクションの見せ方も含めて見せないことにこだわった見せないこと闇の中に人物がこう溶け込んでいって見せないことで何か違うものを際立つよっていう演出をこれだけのビッグバジェットムービーで久しぶりに見た気がするんですそれに僕はものすごく感動したそこについてのこだわりをちょっと伺わせていただけますか、sure. I mean, as far as the,、um, in terms of the costume, this idea of imperfection, it was to show the humanity, and that was one of the things from the beginning. I want, he's been going out in this suit, you know, for two years now. And so it means that he goes out nightly looking for a fight. And so the idea of seeing the number of times he's taken a blow by the first time you ever see his cowl, and you can see the scrapes and the stitching, and you can see that, you can also see that he's. Made it himself. You can see the seams. I wanted this to feel like you understood that this was a guy who was a loner, who was doing this without the help of anyone else, and was kind of piecing it together. And you can see how it fits together, and you can see the scrapes and the scratches. You can see his effort and his struggle. And so the suit was absolutely meant to sort of show that sort of part of his humanity. And one of the interesting things about the suit, because even just thinking about the practicality of being Batman. You know, if you're, you can't be Batman and walk through a well lit space and do what you're supposed to do. So, like, you know, Batman can't go looking for crime in front of, you know, a liquor store, a convenience store. He'll stand out like a sore thumb. They'll go, like, well, oh, there, there's that guy in the bat suit. What's he doing? And so I realized that we had to find a, different modes of expression for him, that when he was not. When he was looking for crime, he couldn't be Bruce Wayne, because Bruce Wayne is super, super、um, famous. And he couldn't be Batman, because Batman would stand out too. So that's how we did this drifter character. And then the idea that when he was in the suit, that he would be lit a specific way, it's because the illusion he's trying to create depends on shadows. You have to have the shadows, and that, that kind of, he's trying to tap into the unconscious, right? He wants the unconscious of the people that he's engaging with to fill in their terrors. He, he's trying to engage them in their fears. And so, this idea of, of dealing with light and dark was something that Greg and I, you know, we looked at every single scene. Sometimes you'd hit a light, and, we, and, and I'd say, oh, wait, he's, he's lit too much. You know, if you lit him too much, suddenly the illusion broke. And that was the whole idea, in a way. Batman is a magic trick. He's showing up here out of the shadows and it's a, he's casting a spell. And so the light is critical to the spell. But light also, for me, is always very emotional. And,、uh-huh. and the idea of、um, even the idea of the, of the romance of, you know, I did a movie with Greg, because Greg、um, called Let Me In. That was the first movie we did together.、Um, and in it, there are these night scenes. And there are these two children who are meeting in the courtyard, and they're, they're under these sodium vapor lights, which have an almost、um, golden sunset quality, but it's also the harshness of that kind of night light. And it's that mixture that has a kind of softness and romance, but also a, a kind of hard edgedness that's also the streets.、Uh-huh. And Gotham felt like this to me Gotham, the, the night light, the street light, and what that felt like. So the light expression was something we talked about on every single scene, from every single moment.、Uh-huh. <笑>あのゴッサムのそう今言われて思ったんですけどゴッサムシティがねやっぱり新しいゴッサムが出現したと思ったんですねやっぱりそのまさにこう今まで僕らがバットマン見てきたゴッサムシティっていうのはどこかの街を連想させる一番はニューヨークだったんですけれども今回はね逆に僕らはニューヨークあのこのゴッサムを今の今現代のニューヨークではなくてまさに70年代とか60年代ちょっとこう。地下鉄僕ら外国人からすると地下鉄に乗るのも怖いようなねなんかああいう怖いうーんとニューヨークというかそういう舞台に変わったこのぐらいそのゴッサムのイメージも変えようと思った理由これもまあ登場人物のいろんなことに紐付いてると思うんですけどそこもちょっと伺わせていただいてよろしいですか、うん、Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to do was I wanted it to be an American city but I didn't want it to be an American city that you could pin exactly meaning If we were going to shoot, I knew I wanted something that was like Times Square, that was going to be Gotham Square. But I knew if I shot it in Times Square, people would say, oh, he's trying to say that Gotham is New York. But I didn't want Gotham to be New York exactly. I wanted Gotham to be another city that was evocative of New York, evocative of a big city like Chicago, but wasn't either of, the, either of those places. And so what we did was we went and we found places that had the foundation of the Gothic architecture. 
So we went to Liverpool, uh, we were in Glasgow, um, and we used different, we, we did use little bits of Chicago, but we tried to use that as a baseline for the Gothic architecture and then sketched in with CG the more modern structures to make it feel like, wait, I know that feels like Times Square, but it isn't, so where am I? And, you, and the answer is you're in Gotham. And I, I think that your question about the tone in terms of it feeling like New York from the 70s or 80s, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, I, I remember going I was I was mugged in in, in uh, Times Square <laughs> in the 80s yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and and you know there was that feeling of, of New York being a very dangerous place a place you know obviously through the 70s the city was bankrupt it was going you know you just always had this feeling of total collapse and I felt like Gotham needed to be a place of that was in this much trouble and so um, this idea you know, especially as taken from year one, year one was written in the 80s as well, the, the Frank Miller, uh, Mazzuccelli uh, classic. And the tone of that spoke very much to me. And it felt like the 70s movies that we talked about. And so I figured that I wanted to find a way to create a Gotham that was in that vein, a city of decay and of violence, um, and also teeming with life in a way too. And you could feel the desperation of the Gothamites going to the Iceberg Lounge to go lose themselves, you know, in, in a moment of dance, you know, with the bright lights, so they could forget. So they could forget the desperation of their lives. Gotham had to be a very desperate place. Yeah. Ah, so, 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 ヴィランであってもおかしくないよね。僕はあるしそのあのバットマンと、えー、何でしたっけあのリズラーうんリズラーかのこうどっちがどっちだってもおかしくないようなあのー、キャラクターの相似性っていうのも感じた。バットマンが彼の立場に入っていってもおかしくないような。だからすごく現代的なあのー、なんていうんですかねこうあの社会に対する復讐心っていうのを持っている。で我々がちょっとどっか心の中で抱えてるこの SNS 時代, SNS 時代の,その復讐心どこからいつ誰から刺されるか分かんないとんでもない方から矢が飛んでくるようなそういう,こうものに対して我々がどう身構えていくのかそれが極端まで走るとどこまで行ってしまうのかっていうなんかそういうことがヴィランにものすごく反映されて,て面白かったそのヴィランがだからどういうふうにリズナーというキャラクターが作られたのかっていうことも。Well, I was inspired by、uh, one of the comics in particular, of The Long Halloween by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. And it was,、mm -hmm. a, it was a serial killer story. And I started thinking, well, if I want to do the world's greatest detective, then、mm -hmm. I should have him investigate these murders. And the murders could be、uh, revealing the truth. About the corruption in this place. And so I thought, okay, and if I want to make it personal, which was the key to me, I figured, well, the killer could be leaving、uh, correspondence and messages to the Batman. And that would be very unsettling to Batman. And then we could lead him along a path that would both describe the corruption of the city, but also lead back to his own origins. And so when that idea came about, that, that sounded to me actually when I thought of. Puzzles and ciphers that someone might leave behind. I was thinking of the Zodiac. And、um, when I thought of the Zodiac, I said, boy, that description sort of works for the Riddler. And I thought this was a chance to do a version of the Riddler that had never been done, which was this kind of dark serial killer version who was also kind of a political provocateur, you know, provocateur somebody who was trying to、um, expose the fraud. In this city, and had a kind of political message about why this place was so corrupt, which ultimately, in time, would be revealed to be very personal for him. So, on the one hand, it seems like a political statement, but it's actually a very personal vengeance that has a connection to Batman's desire for personal vengeance. And so, I thought that Batman and the Riddler could be mirror images of each other,、ah. and that Batman, in a way,、um, he liked to think. That there's a line he won't cross, but because he's taking the law into his own hands, and because he's probably not aware of how much he's driven by his shadow side, he doesn't realize how close he comes constantly to crossing that line. And the danger of crossing the line is always there. And the Riddler just has no problem crossing the line. But they have the same kind of mission, so they're in dialogue with each other. And even visually, I wanted at the beginning of the movie, the movie starts with this big title that says The Batman. 
and then you're seeing somebody watching voyeuristically and spying on someone and you're hearing him breathing and I'm thinking, oh, the audience may wonder, well, it says the Batman, does that mean this is the Batman? But it's actually the Riddler. And elsewhere, you see Batman spying elsewhere and you think, oh, is that the Riddler? But it turns out to be the Batman. And so there's a desire to kind of show that they have a connection. There's a spiritual connection and they're two sides of the same coin. And for me, the idea of the social media was very important because I wanted to ground it in what we're experiencing today. To me, this idea of um, the, the viral nature, the, the idea um, of how you can inflame a mob through uh -huh. communication over social media, um, mm -hmm. that was one of those things that when I was thinking, well, how would the Riddler communicate? I felt that in today's world, if I wanted this to feel like it had resonance with today's audiences, it had to be social media. And so that was where that was born out of. Was it a desire to take Gotham, and though it was a city that didn't exist in the real world, I wanted it to feel like it did exist in our world. So I wanted it to make it of today. あのえー、と僕も実はですねあの97年から992年間ですけれどもあの監督と同じですね南カルフム大学ちょっとインターンとしてちょっといたことがありましてですね、oh. でそのハリウッド映画の中のアクションっていうのはやっぱり映画の原点っていうのはチャプリンでありキートンでありロイドでありやっぱりそのコミュニケーションとしてこうやっぱりこう映画の中でのアクションの大切さっていうことをねあのハリウッドのフィルムメーカーたちはすごく大切にしてるんだなっていうことを感じたんですねそれで僕自身も映画の中でのアクションのあり方についてこだわっているとりわけアクションによってどうやってキャラクターの感情を表すかということについて今回もアクションの中からバットマン自身の,その未熟さとかね思いがけずこうけ結構やられたりしてるなみたいなバットマンがねあの自分よりかなり隠したりそういうそのアクションに対しての監督のこだわり今回の作品な,りならではのこだわりっていうのもところどころに感じることができたその辺もちょっと教えていただけますかあのキャラクターの感情表現だとアクションの関係性 Well I mean I, I first of all that's amazing we were at USC at the same time that's very, that's, that's very interesting <笑> yeah, yeah.、Um, Because I, I graduated in 92, so I don't know. 92,、oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But、um, the, you know, I think that's the key to action in cinema is that it has to be connected to emotion, right? There has to be an emotional imperative. And for me, you know, when I talked to Rob Alonso, who was our,、um, our stunt coordinator, I told him that in that scene where Batman comes out of the shadows, you know, at the end of it, I wanted him to unleash. And I wanted you to understand that this wasn't. Him doing something that was dispassionate. I wanted it to come from a very vengeful place. It had to be very personal because the idea was that while he's imagining that he's out there trying to make things right, what he's really doing is he's out for vengeance. He's never going to get it because he's never going to be able to change his past. That's gone. But this is the, what drives him is this idea that somehow he can.、Um, Intimidate and attack and get revenge against the criminal element, and somehow maybe he can fail. I mean, to, to do what he failed to do as a child, what he couldn't do as a child. He couldn't save his parents from being murdered. And so he goes out night after night looking for this, which is kind of a, an insane kind of task to do. And so I wanted that violence to feel. I, I sort of, one of the references that I used for him, I said, when he comes out, I want him to erupt when the guy says, well, you know, what are you supposed to be? And then the guy's going to make a move at him, and then it's over. And I wanted that to be like that moment in Goodfellas when、um, Karen、uh, has been assaulted by the neighbor, and Henry Hill,、um, the, the, the Ray Liotta character,、um, is gonna, he, you can see that he's in a rage about it. And he, goes, he, goes, he, just, he just goes across the street and he looks at the guy, and the guy's like, What do you want? And he takes out this revolver and he beats him senseless. In a way that's shocking to us. It's not just that he puts this guy in his place. There is a level of rage that's so deep, that's well beyond what it is to just get back at this guy for what he did. He's unleashed something in Ray Leota that changes the way we feel about Henry Hill. At that moment, you realize, you know, at a certain point, you see all these violent people and you kind of feel like Henry is the person who you're engaging with in this story, who you feel is the most like you. You're looking, you've seen Joe Pesci, he's terrifying, you've seen him kill people, you've seen these other people kill people, but Henry Hill seems like kind of your way in. He's the one that's most like the audience. And then suddenly you see him unleash, and everything changes, and you realize.
realized the danger within him. I wanted that level of danger within Batman. I wanted him to feel like this was an expression of something that wasn't rational, but was personal and hot. And then the action itself was all born out of that too. That Batmobile chase needed to be an extension of his obsession, of his rage, of his relentlessness. And so all of the action, even the idea of the wingsuit, that's his desperation. He's just trying to make it. He's he's getting by the skin of his, you know, by the skin of his teeth. And the idea that in all of these fights, not only does he unleash and sort of um, put his rage outward, trouble. but he receives a lot of violence back, and he is injured, and the idea of that landing in the wingsuit was almost more important than the launch. You know, the launch was desperation, but the fact that he was going to take this crazy tumble on the ground, and you were gonna see him really kind of suffer and endure, in a way, that is his one superpower, is his, um, his will to endure anything in this mission. And so I wanted to show how much, not just he would give out, but how much he would take because he's willing to go through anything. He's on an almost suicidal mission because he's <laughs> got to make sense of his life. Yeah. Almost forgot that. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to see it again. And then, what do you want to see it again? This is what I want to see it again. Oh, thank you. Thank you for yeah. coming as well. Tell him I have enjoyed the conversation very much and I really appreciate yeah, 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 it. Tell, tell the filmmaker I appreciate his, his perspective.